Austin L. Coming to you from Lincoln Heritage Life Insurance Company. Always representing. I'm actually just getting in from doing some door knocks today. And one of my business partners reached out to me and told me that it has been about three weeks since I did a video. And so I was like, wow, it has been some time. And guys, I apologize. I have been running I've been hiring, I've had a couple new agents come through, and I definitely wanted to make sure that I spent some quality time with them so that they can have the best start possible with this business. And um, just recently I did a conference call and I talked about why is it so difficult to sell life insurance. And I'm noticing from one individual to another, to another, as well as agents that have been here in this agency for quite some time, why is it so difficult for some individuals to sell life insurance? So I did, like I always do, kind of thought about all the questions that come to me, thought about, you know, how other people are working, what they're doing, what they're listening to. Um, and it really all boils down to your mindset and your confidence. Okay. So I went online and I started looking up different articles, uh, things that have been out for years on the internet. And I always tell agents that you always want to be in the state of learning. You always want to be investigating, researching, studying your craft. Uh, life insurance, the final expense market with Lincoln Heritage is not that difficult. There's not a lot to it. It's a pretty simple program. It's a cash benefit that pays in 24 hours, um, whether they're modified or day one coverage, depending on you know, the type of medications they're taking or the last two years as far as their pre-existing conditions, the type of conditions, you know, and then we have a family support service through the Funeral Consumer Guardian Society and they help the family make sure that they get the best cost possible, whether it be a cremation or a burial using whatever funeral home that they want. Like, that's it. I mean, it really is that simple. However, Whenever we are going out into the field, you, you are the one who is representing the company that you represent. Excuse the noise, that's my dog in the background. Can't shut her up. But you're the one who represents the company. When you are knocking on the door, when you are making a phone call, when you are just randomly talking to people in the streets, you are the company. They are judging your product based on what you look like, based on how you sound, based on the information you provide, and again, how you provide that information. So if you're going out in the field and your clothes are wrinkled or you have big stains going down in front of your shirt, uh, you smell like a whole cigar or a cigarette, you know, your nails are jacked up, you have chipped fingernails, um, your makeup isn't together or lip gloss, you know, your lips are really dry and cracked. Uh, man, your face is real, you know, just scruffy. You didn't shave in a while or brush down your beard or whatever. Or didn't get a haircut in a while. Your hat is nappy. You know, we're coming into winter. Your scarf is nappy. And you guys know what I mean by nappy. You've seen them old-fashioned knitted scarves that have all the little lint balls on there, right? Don't do that. <laughs> I don't care how comfortable and warm that scarf and hat is. Do not go out and do business wearing items like that, all right? You don't have any money? That's okay. I promise you, you can go to Joanne Fabrics or Michaels or any other type of craft store in your area, and you can buy a piece of material. They have that really soft material that people make into scarves, and it'll cost you maybe $2. Matter of fact, you can go to the dollar store nowadays and get a scarf. So... You know, you just want to make sure that you look the part. And again, even if you are a brand new agent and you do not have any money, that doesn't mean you have to look like you don't have any money. Walmart, the thrift store, the red, white, and blue, Salvation Army, they have some pretty nice things there. Trust me, I still shop there. I love it. I get really good deals. Make sure you wash your clothes, take it to the cleaners or whatever, you know, before you put them on, but you can get some really nice clothes from the Goodwill. All right. So let's make sure that the first and foremost, our 
appearance is on point. The second thing was that confidence. Your confidence needs to be on 10. Even if you don't know everything about the product and nobody's ever going to know everything. I've been here seven years and I am still learning. I'm still researching. I'm still finding out things about, I just learned some new information about individuals who want to donate their body. One of the agents posted an article and I read it and I learned, oh wow, I believe if you're like over 250 pounds, you cannot donate your body to science. There's different stipulations. That was something I didn't know. So again, I'm always learning, but I'll be darned if I need to know everything in order to go out and help people. All right. You see my dog? Remy. Remy. Hey. Okay, I don't know what's got her attention. But anyway, um, confidence. So I wrote a few things down, and I'm going to go ahead and go through the list. Just so I don't miss anything for you guys, all right? So the number one thing that I wrote down, and this is from a couple of different articles. One of the articles that I thought was really good was from a John Lindsay, and that's L-E-N-S-I, and I Googled it, all right? I just Googled, you know, selling life insurance, and there's tons of information that pops up. So... Um, I pulled out several different bullet points out of his large article, um, that pertain to our business and the things again, that matched questions that people have asked me and me just observing different agents throughout these past several years. Like what's the difference from one agent that is brand new and another agent that is brand new. And this one's running and selling every day. And this one is still, you know, fumbling through the presentation confidence. People often buy as a result of confidence displayed by the sales agent in making the recommendation. This is so important. If you are in that home and you are talking to the client as if everything's a question for you, like you are unsure, you know, um, ma'am, do you know how much it costs for a funeral? And they're like, oh, well, I'm really not sure. Yeah. I think it's about between seven. I think it's about seven to ten. You need to know. <laughs> you need to know the stats if you're going to ask a question. Man, it's between ten to fifteen thousand today, and who knows what it's going to be in the next five to ten years. Notice the difference in my tone. Confidence. It comes through. The biggest mistake agents make is that they oversell the product and cause the client to become confused, and so now they want to think about it. You have to think about at the end of your presentations, when you start to hear somebody tell you that they need to think about it, it's usually because they're confused. If you're doing all the talking and you are trying to tell them everything from A to Z about life insurance, about your company, about the Better Business Bureau, about the AM Best, I mean, don't do that. It's one thing to talk to another agent that way. It's another thing to talk to the common folk about life insurance and life insurance terms. They don't understand that. All right. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Remy, stop. You about to go in the cage. Stop. Okay. Sorry. Hey, she's like a kid, y'all. Sit down. Sit down. I'm almost done. Good girl. Stay there. Okay. We need to keep this process simple and cater to our presentation style to the need of the client. All right. So your presentation is not going to be the same in every single home. It's just not. You need, it needs to be a conversation. You need to be listening to that client asking questions to pull out information so that you can find out what the need is and fill it. If you don't have a need, you can't fill anything, you're not going to get a check, all right? You're not going to be able to help that family because you did not expose the need, the problem. Some of the questions that I like to ask, have you experienced a funeral lately? And if so, who was it? Have you ever been financially responsible for a funeral? How did that go? Did they have life insurance? Have them start to talk about that situation, that funeral that they may have experienced 
or whenever they did have to pay for or be re responsible for somebody's burial or cremation, what happened? You want to get into the pocket of the emotion of that client during that time. This helps them to understand why they need to take advantage of this insurance today. All right, emotion. You also want to ask, do they have any other life insurance that you're going to be working with? Seniors don't like to change. They don't want you coming in their homes, canceling out policies, making all these changes, starting something new. But when you talk about something that you can work with, one, it makes them feel good. Because now you're almost congratulating them for already having insurance. And now all you're here to do is make sure that they are covered completely. You want to ask them, how do they want to be handled? If they are looking at doing a cremation or a burial, you want to know what you're dealing with. Okay? And then also, do they already have anything paid for? Is anything already taken care of? This helps you to determine what type of quotes you're going to leave with the client and, you know, what they need. You know, if they have other life insurance, you can ask them, okay, well, do you know if it's whole life or term? This helps you to be able to explain to the client what the difference is. All right? And that also helps them build confidence in you knowing that you do know something about life insurance because you're educating them as well. The inexperienced agent will feel the need to recap the whole presentation after they show the numbers. The agents, salespeople, they don't even have to be life insurance agents. Salespeople know that when you present the numbers, you shut up. The first one who speaks loses. As hard as that is, as awkward as it is, shut up. Present the numbers and stop. Even if it feels like it's five minutes, do not speak, okay? <laughs> do not speak. Let them go through whatever it is that they are thinking about. Let them say if it becomes a rebuttal, if it's, oh, you know, I really need to think about it. I need to talk to my children. Any of those, um, the price is too high. So you need to bring it back down. And honestly, in the beginning of your presentation, you should have been asking, is there anyone else that needs to be here in order for you to make a financial decision today? So you don't hear that at the end of your presentation, all right? The experts, the experts are not going to go back through the whole presentation when they present their numbers. What they are going to do is right before they give the quotes, they're gonna say, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Jones, based on the information that I have received from you, you do qualify for day one benefit or you qualify for our modified plan, which we don't say modified. Um, we say something else, but I'm not going to tell you because that's our little, our little word. Anyway, um, we would recap the plan, just recap. That means that the very first day that you make your payment, your plan is in full effect. All right. So Mrs. Jones, every month that you pay this $222 a month, your loved ones are going, we're going to have this $35,000 sitting waiting for them to receive. So whatever the quotes are. All right. So I always paint that picture. When you pay this amount, we're holding this check to wire into your, your daughter's bank account. And I go down my three. I like to do a good, better, and a best. All right. And I'm done. You know, I will go through all the accidental Give examples of if they had an accident, if it was in a car, if it was in, on the bus, Uber, Jitney, whatever. And I go through, then I give them their face value quotes, the premium amount, and then I shut up. I wait for them to pick a price, period. If they don't pick a plan, I tell them, you know what? Great. Thank you for being honest because it doesn't do you or us any good if you pick something that you cannot afford in two or three months down the road, you cancel. Your daughter or your niece or your uncle, or your husband, whoever, that's not going to help them. All right? So what were you thinking about? Were you thinking more of, and then give my two options price-wise. Let them tell you what's comfortable. Then it's a done deal. It's a done deal. 
Oh, $50? Perfect. All I need you to do is go get your photo ID and your checkbook. Let me go ahead and get this one page app filled out. And we're done. Like, we're done. There, if they give you a dollar amount, you're done. There's no, oh, well, let me tell you what you get with this $50. Go get your checkbook and your photo ID, and I'm going to get this taken care of. Yes, they will know by the end of my visit what they do receive for that, what they receive for the $50. But I'm not going to sit here, go get your checkbook and your photo ID. When they come back, I have everything done. All right? So, remember, first one that speaks loses. We should never become overly involved in the mechanics of the company. Again, this is when new agents are coming into a client's home and they are just rambling. They are rambling. They are just telling everything that they ever learned and everything, everything, just everything. There's no reason to talk about a modified plan if the client is day one. There's no reason to talk about the day one plan if the client is modified. How do you know what they are? By asking those questions in the beginning of your presentation. Fact finding. You need to find the facts. Find the need and then fill it. Right? Um, yeah. They don't need to know that the company was here for 64, 65 years. They don't need to know how much money we've earned last year. Like, that doesn't... Clients want to know what can you do for them, for their family. They don't care about you. They don't care about how this helps you. Um, they don't care really about the company. Every now and then you'll get a client ask you, well, how long has the company been here? Um, and honestly, that's because they're trying to figure out if they can trust you. Okay? If they're starting to dig, they don't really trust you. And it's something, some energy that you're giving off or maybe how you look. All right. Main focus is to help the client. They only care about what you can do for them. I just said that. It doesn't matter how good the product is. What matters is who presents the product. Again, in the eyes of the client, you are the company. You. What you sound like whether you have confidence or if you're lacking confidence, all of that is part of the buying process, all of it. So, final expense clients are really, they are our lower to mid income range, okay? And these individuals, they buy based on emotion. Now, if you are selling regular life insurance where you can give a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar policies, those individuals, they're buying more on logic. They are going to be the ones that are a little more, uh, they're definitely going to be judging you also, but they're more logical as well as emotional because they're spending a lot more money and they have the potential of actually having a lot more money paid out. Our clients are emotional beings, period. You have to get them in the emotion in order to get them to see the need to buy this product right now. And again, if you look crazy, if you look like you don't know what you're doing, if you're coming to the door with a ton of bags, like you're going to be in their house for five hours, they do not have time for that. If you're coming to the door and you look like you're all stressed out, broke and broke down, and you just want to run all your negativity on them, they do not have time for that. You will not get into their door. So, don't Think about, oh, it's the holidays, you know, today is December the 15th. Don't sit here and think, oh, well, because Christmas is in two weeks that people are not buying life insurance. I've sold over 10000 in production in the last eight days. Some's good for right now, some is good for later. But they are buying. People are buying every single day. And I have not been out in the field every single day either, all right? People are buying. It is about what you believe, what you think, and what you do. If you think that nobody is buying, you're not going to put in the work. And so nobody's going to buy from you. All right. So I will do another video, I believe, shortly on the mindset as far as the holidays and what you can say if somebody says to you at the door, oh, I want to wait until January after New Year's. I need to wait. Come back and see me after the holidays. I will come back and do a short video about that. So guys, Thank you for tuning in.
promise not to take so long for the next couple videos. Uh, and Paul, he is the one that reached out to me, Paul Chambers. He is going to be doing a video with us shortly. He is one of our top producers and he is a new agent, uh, only a year in and he earned his six figure income ring. So I'm very excited to uh, share him with you guys. And he's just a phenomenal guy all the way around. He's crazy, but he fits right in. So love you, Paul. Thank you. And I know you're on the road for the end of the month, closing out this month strong, but I look forward to speaking with you and sharing you with YouTube. Talk to you guys soon.